I was finally able to see Poor Things. Is it really one of the best movies of the year? Let's find out right now. Oh. Welcome back everyone to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. As I said, I was finally able to see Poor Things after so many weeks of it only playing in like limited theaters, like only in like New York, Los Angeles and all that. It's finally hit my theaters. So I'm very excited to talk about it. But before we get into the review, make sure you leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel. We're on the road to 500 subscribers. It's free to do so. And I'm gonna do you guys a quick plot synopsis just so you know what this weird movie is about. Brought back to life by an unorthodox scientist, a young woman runs off with a lawyer on a whirlwind adventure across the continents. For Free from prejudices of her times, she grows steadfast in her purpose to stand for equality and liberation. And I will say that that plot description doesn't really explain this movie that much. And I will say that I would like you guys to go into an open mind on this movie without knowing too much. Another slight thing I'd say, it's like a female Frankenstein story, just a little bit. And, you know, that's basically the whole premise. Because that's, that's what I went into knowing, basically the whole premise. And I think that everyone else should enter that way. Sure, you don't know too much about the story at that point. But I feel like that's the best way to experience this movie because I experienced it that way. And man, what an experience this was. Just, I think it's one of my favorite movie experiences of the year. I was simply blown away by this. I've been waiting for it for like six months now. It's been on my list to most anticipate this whole year. And I just love what they went for in this movie. I think it all landed for me. It's not going to land for a lot of other people. I can feel a lot of discourse coming for this one when it does open wide and when it does come on streaming. A lot of people are going to hate it because, you know, a lot of people hate nudity in their movies and sex in their movies for some reason. That's a normal part of life. You got to deal with it. But I absolutely loved it. I will say this is a hard R movie. As I said, there's full-blown nudity. There's lots of sex. That's probably the most sex I've seen in a movie in a long time. And yes, there's a lot of language. So please be warned before you go see it. Don't go into the movie and see the sex scenes and be like, oh, I didn't know this was going to be in the movie. Oh yeah, you did. It literally gives you a rating of the movie and it tells you what's in this movie. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of sex in this movie. You got to deal with it. Normal part of life. So don't cry over it. Please don't cry over it. It just makes you look like a weak person. But yes, it's a hard R movie. So please don't take your kids to this. They will be a little bit scarred after this. And this is directed by the wonderful Yorgos Lanthimos. I know when the Oscar nominations are going to come out and people are going to have a hard time saying his name. Sometimes I have a hard time saying his name. I don't even know if I'm saying it correctly. But Yorgos, he's easily becoming one of my favorite directors of all time with his lineup of movies. I haven't seen all of his movies just yet because uh, some of his foreign films that he did make uh, aren't on any streaming services, so I haven't had a chance to go see them. But The Favorite is just an, an amazing film. I love that a lot with Emma Stone, Rachel Weisz, Olivia Coleman. That's amazing. The Lobster is such a weird film. I really do, you know, I think that you guys should go check out The Lobster because it's a weird. It's very weird, but the messaging is great in it. And it just has such a weird plot. But Colin, uh, Colin Farrell's just excellent in that movie. And The Killing of a Sacred Deer is, I think, is, like, I think it's, like, most, uh, I think it's a movie that I don't like the most from him, but I still think it's very good. It's just kind of a more evil film that I'm not really liking that much. And now he has this with Poor Things. This is his biggest project yet. And this is one that I heard he wanted to make for so long. Contacted the author to, you know, get the rights for it, get the permission, and he finally got it. And now we have this amazing film from him. I think this is like his magnum opus, his best film of all time. I don't even know if he's going to make a film that's better than this, just because how damn good it is. Like, I'm just simply sitting there in my seat watching this movie. Just, it's so, there's so much style brewing in this movie. And so much, you know, so a lot of creative elements in this movie that I wasn't expecting. Because I will say... I don't know if I want to say it's an original film because it's based off a book, you know, the book Poor Things. So, I mean, it's a very original film because it's based off such an original and artistic story, I would say. It's, it feels very artsy, and I love that a lot. I love how it has a lot of style and a very weird film. I really love that in films when they go for that. But I will say it's probably the most original film of the year, even though it's not really an original film. It's based off a book, but it, that, I don't know. It just, it feels so original. There's so much in here that just you wouldn't see in other movies because a lot of other studios wouldn't make this movie. But Yorgos, you know, he goes for the weird factor and I think he nails it here so much. His direction here, I think, is the best he's ever done. I do like, I do think his uh, direction of the favorite is also sort of great because he's going for like, uh, this time period where, you know, everything has to be so sophisticated. This one, he is allowed to go a little bit weirder. So I think his direction, you know, I think that he went in so many different directions here is very interesting. And I will say the style, it's, it's a very weird film. It's weird, funny, sexy, and also has a lot of heart with a lot to say with an amazing script because 
I, I don't even know this script. This adapted script is so great. I was just blown away by the writing in here. And I feel like it could easily win adapted screenplay at the Oscars just for this. It, it's amazing. And the design of this, the set design and costume design are simply fantastic. I think they're my favorites of the entire year. Because, you know, Barbie, I think, had that spot of my favorite for set design and costume design. But this just feels so much more creative and it just feels so much more real. It just feels like these people are actually walking in these sets that could be lived in in that steampunk time period. And it all just, you know, each costume is absolutely insane, but they're also beautiful to look at. Emma Stone is wearing like so many different costumes, like over 10 costumes in here. Everyone just has such a, you know, a fantastical element to them. The costumes just have so much color popping off of them. You know, Barbie has great costumes, amazing costumes even. But I feel like some of the Barbie costumes were all the same because that's the point of the Barbies. Their costumes are all the same, just colors change. But these these costumes in Poor Things just have so much, you know, stuff going for them. A lot of stuff going for them. And I was just blown away by how they made this world look. And I will say, Jerskin Fendrix, hopefully I'm saying that right, his score that he does here is simply astounding like there's so many different instruments in here and how he uses them is just a you know a fantastic way feels very steampunky feels very like sci-fi-esque i would say and i think this this score is easily one of my favorites in the entire year i'll go back to this one a decent bit i don't i don't think it's going to win over oppenheimer but it's a great score and robbie ryan is a cinematographer here and i gotta give him a big you know round of applause i'm a big fan of cinematography it's if it's done right it can turn out very amazing and just make you feel like you're living in this world that's exactly what he went for that's exactly what he did the camera angles are great the cameras are great you know it feels like a yorgos film there's a lot of fisheye and there's even some scenes where you're just looking through the small peephole the rest of the screen is black i love those scenes and how he did it so you know big congrats to them big congrats to the editing team i think everything in here just you know camera wise editing wise costume wise was fantastic and we got to talk about the cast the cast is such a big part of this film that made it work so much because you really got to believe in your cast to make this work and emma stone as bella baxter was just you know you i can't even say any words i could say she's amazing i could say she's fantastic but she's better than that you go into the film thinking wow she's gonna be great it's emma stone she gives great performances the favorite uh la la land all that but this is i think this is her best performance to date because she's dealing with a character that has you know it starts out with a baby brain so she doesn't know anything doesn't know how to do anything she's like a baby in the beginning and then you grow up with her through these you know steps in this movie you grow up through it with her the whole two and a half hour journey here and by the end, she's like a fully evolved, you know, human being. So I really loved how she took this, you know, route into this character and how she made this character her own and just brought Bella Baxter to life from the book. So I thought she did a great job. She is, she is really brave in this role. I got to say, everyone's been saying it, but she's very brave for taking this role because I mean, it's one of those roles. Like if you took it in the early 2000s, it could easily ruin your career if it doesn't land properly. But Yorgos and Emma have a great way of making this land properly. But Mark Ruffalo also stole the show for me a lot. He is just, you no, know, you're not going to be prepared for how his character is in here. Because he's giving a, you know, big accent in this film. And he's going 100% for the accent. Even though the accent is really terrible. That's why I think I love him so much. Because he knows the accent is terrible. He does a great job. I know I know a lot of people are going to go see this and be like. Oh it's Mark Ruffalo from the Marvel movies. But no Mark Ruffalo has been in so many other great movies. Especially Spotlight. That's one of my favorites from him. And Dark Waters is great. But here he just plays a funny. Just a very funny character. That is just addicted to Bella. And then he becomes not addicted to Bella. Once Bella outsmarts him. That's all I'll say for him. But he has a lot of standout moments. Uh, well Defoe as Dr. Godwin Baxter is great. He's more of, you know, the human character in the story. He, you know, he illustrates us through this kind of story, tells us who Emma uh, Bella Baxter is in this story. So he's kind of, you know, the basic, you know, I don't know, he's not the narrator. Of course he's not, but he's the main one who starts it all, puts this story into motion. He has, he is a very human character, has a lot of heart. And Remy Yusuf is not a person that I'm very familiar with. I've seen him in a couple of things, but he, him playing Max McCandles here, he did a great job here. I loved his, you know, I love how he felt. His character just felt so human also. Him and uh, Godwin Baxter working together was great. I loved that a lot. Willem Dafoe and Remy Yusuf did a great job together. Their chemistry landed really great. Because uh, I liked how Remy Yusuf, his character comes into this story and he doesn't really know what's happening, but it kind of gets you to it like we did. So he kind of illustrates how the audience is feeling half the time but he has one of my favorite lines of the whole entire year in this movie you'll 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 probably know the line once it comes up because uh, it's a great line and it's very early into the story 
and it's probably the funniest line in the whole movie. So I gotta say, big round of applause to the whole cast here. They they did a fantastic job. It's a very hard movie to get right, but they did a great job. The writing here is fantastic, as I said, and the pacing here. The pacing could have been terrible here, I gotta say, because it's a, like, a, I think it's almost two and a half hours. It's like 220, and it uses the th three act structure in such a perfect way in my eyes. I don't think it's going to work for everyone. Just like I said, the whole film might not work for everyone, but I love the three act structure because you, as I said, you start with Bella being like a baby, kind of like toddler brain and you, every act you see a different, you know, side of her and different chapter of Bella flourish and grow. Uh, so I really like that a lot because it actually works so well at that point, but there's a slight twist in the third act that I wasn't expecting. It takes a little bit of a turn into kind of a different story that I was worried. I thought it would kill the film, but it made me love it even more because I loved seeing the more human side of Bella and her grow up even more through this like another like I don't know another challenge that she faces in this whole big story it's like it's it's crazy how much story you can fit into that two and a half hour and how much you can see these characters grow but that's what you that's what you get when you have great character development a great script and some great direction and I was just blown away by it so I do want to talk about the Oscar chances for this one just a little bit because it's a bit it's going to be a big Oscar movie I gotta say it's gonna get it's gonna rack up a lot of nominations so I really do gotta recommend that you check this one out before the Oscars just so you know what it's all about and all that but it is a very weird movie I gotta say that it's gonna get nominated for best picture best actors best supporting actor uh, best score best cinematography and many others that's all I'll say but I do think that Emma Stone is my favorite actress of the year so far favorite probably my favorite performance of the year so far beating Killian this performance by her is breathtaking I was not ready for it. I don't think anyone's ready for it, but I was just blown away by what she does. So Poor Things is, you know, it might be my favorite movie of the year. I'll say that. I got to think about it for a couple more days. Got to see it another time, two more times. I'm going to go see it so many times at this point. I'm just very happy with this film, but it has a lot of style in it. It's brewing, which is creativity. The costumes are great. The set design is great. Emma Stone is great. Your Ghost Land, the most created such a fantastic film. So Poor Things is going to get a perfect rating, a 10 out of 10. I was blown away by this. I loved it all. It's not going to be for everyone. Probably going to have a lot of discourse. Just get ready for all the sex. Just enjoy it, I guess. But I, I love this movie a lot. Uh, leave your thoughts down below if you did watch Poor Things. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to talk about it. Make sure to like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.